everybody, welcome back to my studio. I hope your week has been going well for you. Mine's been fairly busy, not as busy as the previous two weeks. I finished my two art classes that I taught um, for the art museum here in town. And I have one more class I'm teaching this weekend, which is a fundraiser for my local animal shelter. I'm gonna be doing a watercolor crafty class. Because I'm teaching class, I thought good this week, I kind of practice some of my watercolors. I kind of have this mixture between watercolor and Copic markers, color pencils, or a mixture of the three. But the last two months, a huge focus has been on working on the comic, which is digital, and then Sketch Timber and, and Inktober, which I have done all digital. So a lot of the art I have been doing outside of just normal videos has been digital. So it's probably a good idea that I pull out my paintbrushes and practice a little bit. I attempted to try realism. <laughs> I am not a realistic artist. I like to do kind of more of an illustrated look. But it's always good to kind of push yourself out there and see what you can do. And I was actually rather surprised and pleased with how it turned out. If you find that you are kind of in an artistic rut, maybe you have the same art supplies or the same style and you're constantly just doing the same thing over and over and over again and think, oh, I wish I could push myself to do something different but you just don't know what, then you might be very interested in today's sponsor, Smart Art. Smart Art Box has partnered with my channel for many, many has it been years now? I think it's been years now. And we've done a pretty much monthly art box opening to see what's inside and then I take the challenge to see what I can create. Sometimes it's super fun, sometimes it's kind of scary, you never know. So let's go ahead and jump into the box and see what they have in store. For those of you who don't know what Smart Art is, it's a monthly subscription art box or art experience and they give you all the supplies that you need to create an art project. They give you step-by-step -step instructions. They also give you fun word prompt challenges if you're kind of having an art block and not knowing what to create. So those are kind of fun to go with. But if you're like me, I generally look at what they tell me to do and then try something totally different because that always works out so well for me. So let's check out this box and see what is inside. The theme for this month is alcohol inks, which I love Copic markers, which is an alcohol ink, but these are a little bit different. They're in bottles. This is by the company Marabu, which I have used several of their products before and really like it. The little squeezy bottles and in several different colors. So we have a purple, magenta, Caribbean blue, apple green, lemon. I'm getting hungry reading these like titles here. This looks like a colorless blender, and I think it's a colorless blender, but it's not. It is a rainbow sparkly one, which I'm super happy about. Recently, they have started including some snacks, which they have a Jolly Rancher grape flavor, the best flavor of all the Jolly Ranchers, and a cool sticker. Also in the box is this collection of alcohol brush pen markers, and they come with several different colors, a blue, a yellow, a magenta, a black, and then a colorless blender plus a very cool paintbrush. I love paintbrushes and Smart Art keeps me so supplied in paintbrushes. I have not had to buy a paintbrush in like years. Now this is brand new. I've never used this before. So this is called Door Layer and it's it says on the packaging that it accepts inks, lead pencil, color pencils. You can erase it and cut out your designs. I've always used this paper with my alcohol inks, so this will be something brand new. But if you like to use paper, they did supply some really nice watercolor paper that you can use these alcohol inks with. I think this is a great box and it's given me a lot of things, many of them I've never tried before. So I am excited to try this out and see what I can create. Again, if you need some ideas or helpful suggestions, they have a wonderful little pamphlet that you can go through and gives you the step-by-step -step instructions with pictures because I love the pictures and then gives you word prompts. So the picture that they used was mushroom and that was all I could have in my head was like, oh, I want to do a mushroom but I didn't want to do the same thing that they did. So it took me a little while to come up with an idea if I could do a picture of a person with some really colorful hair. Because I've never used this product before, I want to test it out. And I highly recommend anytime you try something brand new that you test it out first because and it may not work the way you think it will work. Now the one flaw that I see in these products is the squeezy bottles because they it's great, they have the seal on the bottle so that the ink doesn't ink everywhere. 
Um, and if I had a pair of scissors in my studio, which you would think I would have a pair of scissors in my studio, but I had used all my scissors in my art class and it's still packed in the trunk of my car, so I didn't have an actual pair of scissors. Um, if you did, you would just snip that off and that would be fine. The only pair of scissors that I had, because I was too lazy to go to my car and get my scissors, was a pocket knife that I found in my art box and has this tiny little pair of scissors which really did not work. But the caps that are on top of it, they they clip on to the bottle but to get them off you kind of have to squeeze it and I found that when I squeezed it it kind of popped it off but then ink would kind of go everywhere and it was a little bit messy. So the design of these ink bottles that was probably the only flaw. But really we're, we're into how does this ink work? I started off by putting just a few drops on this kind of plasticky paper and began to play with it or kind of move things around. See, the thing with alcohol inks is you have to remember that they're alcohol based, which means as the alcohol evaporates, they dry and alcohol evaporates rather quickly. So they dry and adhere to the plastic super duper fast. So things didn't move as quickly as I wanted it to. If this happens to you and your, and your inks are kind of sticking and drying out too fast, you can use your colorless blender solution, which is what I thought I had, um, but it wasn't. It was um, kind of pearlescent, sparkly stuff, which I was super excited about and then promptly forgot that I had. Um, or you can use rubbing alcohol. And I would highly recommend that you use like a 91% alcohol. The first bottle I grabbed from my medicine cabinet was 50% and it just didn't have enough oomph to regenerate, to enter, to, to re, re-energize the inks. But my 91% proof uh, rubbing alcohol did amazing and everything just whooshed away almost, almost too much. You can just like dribble the alcohol on it, but I have a little tiny craft misting spray bottle and I just put that in there and just push, 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 and it worked perfectly. The, the fun thing about working with alcohol inks is that it's super forgiving when you're doing abstract art. So you can layer these colors up more and more and more. So you'll see I have the really dark colors in there and then when I added the alcohol on top, it kind of melted some things out and kind of gave this pastel-y color behind. But ultimately I want to create my my colorful head person and so wanted to do like a profile of her face and then add in the hair. The plastic took the pencil very nicely. I loved it. I didn't want to put guidelines in drawing this because I wasn't exactly sure how well it would erase. Um, if you're nervous about that because the plastic's a little bit transparent, you could draw your design on a separate sheet of paper, put the plastic over top of it, and then trace your design in. That would work fine. But you know me, I just jump on in both feet. So I drew in her face, and then the fun part, which is adding the alcohol inks. Now, remember, this kind of art style is crazy. You're not really creating art as you are allowing art to become. <laughs> There's no controlling drops of alcohol. I mean, you can kind of corral it and and you say, you know, this would be great if you stay right here, but it's going to do what it wants to do. <laughs> First thing I did was just to apply each color individually and then grab my paintbrush and begin to swirl. Now, if you swirl it too much, you're going to probably end up with a, a kind of a mossy, soupy brown. It might not be what you're going for. So remember, less is more with this. <laughs> You'll also see there were some definite places where the hair began to sleek over into her face. But as I read the instructions and suggestions that Smart Art sent along, they said you can take a little bit of the rubbing alcohol and use it as an eraser for it, and it worked really well. I just kind of swooped that up and just cleaned up my edges. At one point in this video, as I was recording, I had some guests stop by my studio, so I was chatting with them. And whilst I was chatting, the red from her lipstick began to smear in. I guess she wanted to be more of like a joker kind of art piece. So I had to clean that up. And even though it had dried already, the rubbing alcohol just revived it beautifully. And I was, for the most part, able to touch everything up and make it look the way I wanted it to. One last suggestion if you try this art supply is that I didn't know how fragrant the alcohol inks were because it was in my studio and Copic markers don't have a really strong fragrance so I wasn't thinking about this and as I was working I didn't think about that but when my company came over and I got a breath of fresh air I went whoa my studio really had a strong 
aroma to it. So crack a window, get some ventilation, don't kill your brain cells like I did mine. So yeah, there you go. These are so fun. Um, and again, something that I've never done before and I found something really cool that I can do. They have a bit of a fragrance. They definitely, they definitely have a little a ventilations needed in this room. But because these papers are slightly transparent, if you take this one and put it behind this one, I don't know if you can see, it kind of adds this really cool pattern. So like if I wanted to, I could bump up my kind of mixture if I don't want the kind of the smooth color look and I want a little bit more blotchy look, then going in like that will changes it up. I just noticed that because I put them on top of each other and was like, what was that? And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool looking. Once again, thank you so much to Smart Art Box for sponsoring this video and giving me an opportunity to create fun art and hopefully fun video content for you guys. If you'd like more information about Smart Art Box to see if their subscription is right for you, I'll leave a link to their website in the description box below. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll get notified every single time I upload a new video. I try to upload two videos a week. As you guys may have noticed the last couple weeks, it's been one video a week. But I'm hoping once now that classes are done, I will be back on my normal schedule soon, hopefully. <laughs> but that's why that notification bell is super, super important. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see in upcoming videos, either tutorials or art challenges, I'll leave those in the comment section below. If you want to continue your art journey along with me, you can check out any one of these videos over here for some more art a la carte fun. Well guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video, and as always, God bless you guys, keep being creative, trying new things, and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye!